Hey everybody, Miranda Patron here just to do a quick oval tutorial. I've been asked quite often about how to do the oval dot shapes and there actually are a bunch of ways you can do this. So I'm going to show you a few in this little video today. Alright, so first up I just have a pencil eraser that you use, you know, put on the end of the kids pencils just for erasing. And this one's pretty easy. It's just a straight up and down dip and dot. And they're kind of like um, little petals, but it's still an oval shape. And you just kind of rock it back and forth to get that even size on both ends so that it doesn't look like a raindrop. And just, you know, be cognizant, don't go off to either side. It just straight up and down perpendicular to your paper because I mean if you go off to either side equally it'll make a different shape but it's going to be uneven if you do the one side or the other so it just takes some, a little bit of practice not too much pretty easy to use and it's something that's easy to find the dollar store I think they have like packs of 20 for a buck okay next up is a popsicle stick and these ones aren't as flexible as the eraser and it makes a little bit of a different size smaller petal but again it's something that is easy to find and works pretty well I'm, I'm not being wary of how hard I press I'm literally pushing down as hard as I can in my palette here and then push down it can touch the paper it doesn't matter. So the thing with dotting that I always try to make people aware of though is the consistency of your paint. It's got to be a little fluid. You can see, you know, if I go to stir this up a little, it drips off. It's a little fluid. It barely is holding on to the tool. But it's not sticky, it's not thick like the heavy body ones. It's a little bit fluid. Okay. Next up is a flathead screwdriver. So our husbands and I might not be super excited. I have my own toolbox. If you have your own toolbox, you might not be either about getting paint all over your tools. So I just went to the dollar store, which they have a tool section in ours. So for a dollar, you can get flathead screwdriver, one that you don't mind getting paint upon. <laughs> and these will make a petal shape as well. So this one I have to get a lot of paint on too and it's a little more what's the word I'm looking for? Narrow. So it's a narrow oval. But this way too you can start a little maybe a journal or just kind of a key for yourself as to which tools do which shape. So you can see it's considerably thinner than the other two. Alright then we have the silicone tools. So the silicone tools, I someone had given me these set, this set and I don't know where they got it from, but I have since seen them on Amazon, on Wish, if you don't mind buying from there. Um, but online definitely seems like the place to go to find the silicone tools. And do some research because there's a ton of different price ranges. I've seen them as low as two dollars for a five pack um, up to I don't know twenty two dollars in a set type thing so and this one actually has a dotting tool at the end of it which is pretty neat. Um, so this is an oval shape on the end of this and this you kinda have to hold like a pencil and don't get too too much paint on it because it's kind of like the acrylic rods where you have to gauge how much to put on without it overrunning the sides to get kind of the similar shape each time same size so again it takes a little bit of practice to get the sizing but it's not impossible and it's definitely easier than brushes if you've never used paint brushes and you're looking for a tool to do that. So this is the larger of the silicone. And then I have these ones in my shop. This one's a little grubby because 
you guys all know my kids hop into my tools, but I have extras, so here's a clean one, <laughs> what they look like. And you can see the length, some people are shocked when they get them. It's only about three and a half, I don't know how much I said, like four inches long, so just a bit longer than my palm. You can see here how big it is. But this one I like because it's a dual end type deal. So with the silicone end, we can make smaller of these ovals. And you can hold this like a pencil too, which really is what drew me to this idea because I like the angle. I like being able to see what I'm doing, where I'm placing my dots a little bit better. So that's the silicone end, but we can also flip this little guy around like we did with the popsicle stick and get teeny tiny petals. So it's kind of like a dual, dual dotter. So look at these teeny little, and these ones will have a little bit of a, a point because it has a tip, the shape. But you can play with these a little bit to get different. See, I'm just kind of wiggling it back and forth to get the same size each time and just kind of wiggle it back and forth. But you could just dip and dot it too and see, it makes kind of like a raindrop. And they can get skinnier. So it's just a fun thing that I found to play around with. And these are the ones that I have in my shop. A lot of people have been asking to see what the actual shape is, <coughs> pardon me, that you get from them. So here we go. Alright, so this is a flat angled brush. So it's not, an, the brush part is not actually bent. The actual bristles are angled. So it's a flat angled brush. And this one is made by plaid. Just the, this one is the one eighth of an inch. And so the brushes take a little bit of time to practice with, but not much. And you can see the ovals that this little one makes. And I'm just gently pressing, and then you just kind of wiggle it back and forth to get an even dot. I'm running out of paint in my palette here. But again, the pressure with these, you can go harder. These ones also you can do a, a swipe with. So, you know, just the brushes do some different things. But that way you can see too that brushes can make ovals too. I'm going to rinse this off. But this way too is easier to see how it's beveled. At an angle. Alright, so my last are the actual flat brushes. This one's actually pretty big, it's a half inch. So I get a good amount of my paint on and just gently kind of press down so that you don't move. Well, let me get in the picture better here. We'll do it over here. So gently just press down. And these ones are gigantic, obviously, compared <laughs> to the rest because it's a pretty large brush, but I just wanted to show that the flat brushes work too if you already have them or Amazon has a bunch of good flat ones. I'll, I can post some links in here too for them if you guys want. That way you can go check them out. But this is just a flat brush and you can see if you're doing a larger canvas and you don't want to do all these little little dots then a larger canvas you want larger so you can go larger with your painting implements. Alrighty, I hope you all found this helpful and encourage you to just try dipping things that you have around. I found that was helpful for me um, when people were looking for ways to do ovals that weren't brushes. Just went around dipping things. Um, one of the lovely people who comes on to Facebook to check out my page gave me this idea for the screwdriver. So these aren't all my ideas, but the other, the silicone ones I have in my shop, the paintbrush was what I was using, but just in researching other ways to do ovals that may be a little bit easier and depending on your hand strength or, you know, capabilities with each tool and how much practice you can put in, then it depends on the tool for each different person. So, 
Alright guys, I hope you're all doing well, and I hope you found this helpful. As always, you know where to find me, MirandaPatroneArt.com, or Instagram, Facebook, MirandaPatroneArt. So, Alright, have a great day everyone. Take care.